Hey, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about a really crucial set of ideas in a introductory physics unit, talking about motion, and the key ideas we're going to be dealing with today are position, distance travel, displacement, and vectors versus scalars. So to begin with, I actually want to not define these things for you, but have you discover their differences through working through some problems related to things you've probably seen before. You have probably seen a football play on TV before. So let's work with that. And here is the scenario that I've created. It says on a football play, a running back starts at the 30 yard line. So he starts right here, gets the ball as he runs his route back behind the line of scrimmage to the 20 yard line and continues his run up to the 50 yard line. So the first question I have for you is how far in the Y axis has the football player run in total? All right, so first of all, I do want to mention this Y axis is this up and down axis. We're not worried about the X axis, so we're not going to be concerned with this little J or U shape right here. We're just focused on what's happening in the Y axis. So the question, though, is how far has a football player run in total? And note this question is not what is the yards gained or lost on the play. It's like how far did the running back actually run in terms of the yards. So this running back ran 10 yards backwards, 10 yards forwards, and plus another 20 yards over here. So in terms of distances ran, 10 yards back, 10 yards forward, 20 yards, the sum is going to be 40 yards in total. Notice I am not worried about whether or not this is in the forward or the negative direction. I'm not calling this like negative 10 yards when he runs backwards. I'm literally just asking for how far has he run without respect to direction. And that is crucial. That's going to be something called distance traveled. Now I want to contrast that with another question. So the second question is, what is his gain or loss in the play from the beginning of the play to the end of the play? Gain or loss meaning how many yards has he gained or lost from the beginning of the play to the end of the play, and how do you calculate that in terms of points, initial and final? All right, so again, I want you to think about what's the gain or the loss on the play, and how would you calculate that? So take a moment to really think through that. You will learn more if you actually try and interact with this than just sit there and do nothing. And so the answer is going to be 20 yards, and here's how we came up with that. We're going to say, well, his final position over here is going to be at the 50-yard line. I can see that the difference between the final and the initial position is going to be 50 minus 30, and that will give me a 20-yard difference. I'm not going to worry about this stuff back here because I'm just considering the difference between my initial position and my final position. And the way I went about solving that is going to be taking my final position and subtracting out my initial position. All right, and last, are these the same values? 40 is clearly not the same thing as 20. So distance traveled is not the same thing as displacement. So our answers are not going to be the same because distance traveled and displacement are not the same thing. I did throw in labels here. So that's what we mean by distance traveled. This is what we mean by displacement. Let's give another example a shot. All right, so it says on another play, a football is handed off to the running back who starts at the 25-yard line and fumbles at the 45-yard line. A defense scoops up the fumble and runs to the 10-yard line. All right, so we start here, goes back, and it gets driven back over here. This is our initial position, and this is our final position. So now I want you to try this, because you will learn more if you actually try it. It says, how far in the y-axis has the ball traveled on the play? This is called the distance traveled. So what's our distance traveled for this play? All right, and so hopefully you've been able to think through that. Well, you would have 20 yards plus another 20 yards plus 15 yards for a total of 55 yards. I just noticed that my scale is way off. This 25 should be down here, closer to the 10 than closer to the 25. All right, but you get the idea. Hopefully you were able to come up with this. So 20 yards back, 20 yards back to where he started from, plus another 15 yards for a total of 55 yards. That's how far the distance traveled, how far the ball has actually traveled. All right, and secondly, what is the gain or the loss in the play, and how would you calculate that? This is called the displacement, and just like that problem before, we said that's going to be our final position minus our initial position. All right, well, if our final position is 10, we would have 10 minus 25, and we have a negative 15 yards. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible. In football terms, it would be a loss on the play, you could say. Is it possible to have a negative distance traveled 
And the answer is no. Mathematically, in the way we would have defined it, it's not possible to have a negative distance traveled, but it is possible to have a negative displacement because that's the difference between your final location and your initial location. Since we're using the y-axis, I'm labeling this as y-final and y-initial. If this was in the x-axis, I would be using xf and xi. All right, let's continue. And so just a couple definitions here. We're going to say position is the location of an object with respect to some location, usually on a number line. All right, and our distance traveled is the sum of the absolute values of the entire route that an object has traveled. Our displacement is more important. Displacement is actually more important in physics than distance traveled. Displacement is a straight line path between the initial and the final positions of an object. So if you take a look at this graphic right here, hopefully that helps. This is going to be our displacement. This could be the distance traveled. So distance traveled depends on the path that is taken, you could say. Displacement does not depend on the path that is taken. Displacement is also change in position, which could be written like this. So this is a delta symbol right here. Don't let that freak you out. It just, that triangle symbol is a Greek letter called delta. It means change. So our change in position for the x-axis is our final position minus our initial position. So displacement in the x-axis is equal to xf minus xi, or our change in our position in the y-axis is equal to our y final minus our y initial. And this change in position is also called displacement. Okay, just a couple other things. Remember, displacement can be positive or negative. Distance travel can only be positive, and displacement is a vector. Vectors, they are physical quantities that have a magnitude, which is a number, as well as a direction. They have to have a direction associated with them, whereas distance traveled is not a vector, but is something called a scalar quantity, and that means it just has a number. There is no direction associated with the scalar quantity. So other example of scalar quantities would be something like mass or temperature. There's no direction with mass. There's no direction with temperature. That's kind of a meaningless thing to say, well, what's the direction to the temperature? That doesn't, no, that doesn't make sense, right? Because that's a scalar quantity, but displacement is a vector quantity, so you have to have a direction associated with a vector quantity for it to make sense. All right, let's try one last problem to see how this all ties together. This last problem I have for you says, a student home in Maple Valley, Washington, heads south for 14 miles to Enumclaw, and then hangs out with friends. She then heads back up north 14 miles to her home and then continues on an extra one mile north to eat a burger at Hops and Drops. What is the distance the student has traveled? All right, oftentimes for physics problems, what you're gonna wanna do is actually make a diagram. This may seem beneath you or like a waste of time, but trust me, I've taught many smart students over the years who have missed problems and missed points because they thought making a diagram was just not a good use of their time or they were above it or something somehow. So a decent diagram you could draw for this would be something like this. You start out, we could call zero her home, minus 14, I could write a mile down here would be helpful, but I ran out of room, would be down to Enumclaw, and then an a one on our y-axis right here, a one up here would be at hops and drops. So that helps us to understand what is happening with the problem. She starts here in Maple Valley, she goes down to Enumclaw, then she goes north to her home, and she continues on for one more mile. So the question I have is, what is the distance that the student has traveled? Do that calculation mentally right now, please. And so our distance traveled is going to be equal to the distance from home to Enumclaw plus the distance from Enumclaw to her home plus the distance from home to hops and drops. So that's going to be 14, 14, and 1. I kind of ran out of room, so I was just putting in numbers. I should put in the units as well. And we end up with 29 miles being the distance that she traveled. Another way of thinking of that is the total number of miles she put on her odometer, on her car for that day, driving around. All right, and secondly, what is the displacement of the student from her home to hops and drops? So this is like her initial position was here, her final position is over here, and so the way you're gonna calculate that, remember, we're dealing with the y-axis in this case, so we'll call it delta y, and what that is, this is our displacement, it's gonna be a change in position, so her final location minus her initial. So it's always final minus initial whenever you have a delta anything. You will see that multiple times throughout physics. And so then we go ahead and plug in our numbers here. So this is at the positive one mile location. This is at the zero location. 
And so our delta y is going to be a positive one mile or one mile north. That is her displacement from her original location at home to where she ended up at the restaurant. The displacement is going to be a positive one mile or one mile north. And notice that answer, that one mile north or positive one mile is not the same as 29 miles. So again, this has been a foundational lesson with some really crucial concepts for understanding physics, specifically an early unit on motion in one dimension. That's where we're going with this. So I hope this has been helpful. If you have any comments, let me know. And please continue to watch some more videos. I'll do more videos on physics concepts as well. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.